Hey guys, welcome to the beginning of our summer intro stats class. I've already talked to a lot of you and tried to help you out in getting things going. I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of encouragement in that you guys can do it and that I promise that uh, using the software is going to get a little bit easier. And uh, to help out, I thought that we could uh, take a look at some of our... Um, Oh, at some of our icebreaker questions and see what we can actually do with this data that we collected. So when you filled out that data sheet, uh, what happened or that survey is it came in and it filled in this, uh, this data set or this spreadsheet. And so it took all of the questions that, that we asked, it put them in a nice uh, format. And when we do a, um, a data set, it's set up so that each individual row is a unique observation, and then the columns are the different variables. So we start off, this is the timestamp, this is when everybody responded, and then we go over and we get individual people's last names, their first names, their birth month, uh, their different majors, the year in school, uh, etc etc so some of this stuff is numerical data so numerical data are things that we uh, use with numbers there are different types of numerical data and we'll get into that a little bit later um, but if we're counting things numbers we got numerical data if we've got categories that's dealing with categorical data so majors categorical birth month categorical um, year in school we could have made that numerical but this way we did it as categorical so there's some overlap there um, but let's go ahead and let's actually just take this data set and let's take a look at it let's see what are some maybe patterns or things that we can look at and this is going to help you out uh, with just um, with just working on your individual assignments uh, just so that you can get a little bit more practice of seeing what's going on if you want to follow along I give a link to this uh, to this file I don't think you can edit it but I think that you can copy uh, all of the responses uh, let me know if you can't okay right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all I'm going to open up my R studio so I'm running this on a Mac uh, it should look basically identical on a PC I run it on both and I, I like it on both okay so here is what we're going to do all right, so if you haven't uploaded R Commander yet, we do need to do that. So if you haven't done it, I've got a whole video on it, but the basics is you got to go to this little install button under packages. So there's this packages install, and then you got to look up R CMDR, and we've got to download it. And there, there's a couple steps that we got to do there. But anyways, that's the first thing that we've got to do. Um, you can either scroll down and click on it to upload it. So scroll down all the way to the R's and there it is, R Commander. You can search it up here, RCMDR, and there it is. Or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in library and type in RCMDR and it will load that guy for me automatically. And it's going down and it should pop up my R Commander pop-up window. And there it is. Uh, just a kind of a total side note. Uh, if you notice, I've kind of got a dark theme going on here. There's actually quite a few dark themes or theme changes that you can do to your R Studio. Uh, if you want to do that, you can go to, I do believe it is. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Oh, yeah, it's over here. Sorry. RStudio Preferences. It's in a couple different places. Preferences, you can go to Appearance, and then you can change it to a whole bunch of different themes. I'm on Cobalt right now, but if you want to do Crimson or Dawn, anyhow, it's just personal preference. Darker color is usually a little bit easier on your eyes if you're going to be staring at it a whole bunch. Uh, but anyhow, that's that's what I'm using. Anyhow, okay, so we're here in R Commander now, and we need to get our data set into R Commander. There's a couple ways that, that we could do it. I could save this as an Excel file and upload it as an Excel file, or there's a really slick way that, that we can copy our data in too. So I'm going to click on A1 here, and I'm going to just do either Control A if you're on a PC or Command A on a Mac, and it's going to highlight all of my data. Uh, if you didn't, if you get, I don't know, stumped on that, you can always just click on the first one and just go highlight, but it's kind of a pain. So I'm just going to do Control-A, Command-A, copy all that guy, 
I'm going to copy this, and as soon as I copy it, it puts it in a thing that's called my clipboard. And our commander can actually read things straight from a clipboard. So we could go to data, import data, and here I'm going to go to text file, clipboard, or URL. I'm going to click on that guy. I can name it something. Uh, sometimes naming it makes it does some weird things, so I think I'm just going to leave it as data set for right now. We're going to say that we're going to grab it from the clipboard, and then the field separator needs to be tabs. Okay, once you do that, we're just going to click OK. Sometimes you've got to give it a couple of tries to get it to work, um, but I've got it all in now, and we can double check to see if I actually have it in there. So there's a button up here that's called View Data Set. So I've uploaded data, and I want to see if I actually got it in there. So I'm going to click on the View Data Set, and it pops up this little window, and it's got the data in. So it looks like I've got 30 pieces of data, or 30 people have entered it so far, and then I've got a whole bunch of responses. Okay, so there we go. That's what I've got. And I want to close out of there. Okay, so some of these things we've got, like I said, we have numerical data. Some of them we have categorical data. Now, let's say that I am actually wanting to, let's make a frequency table, because I think those were some of the first questions that we had. Uh, so let's go to statistics, and we can go to summaries, and we can go to the frequency distributions. Now if we notice here in frequency distributions, these are only for categorical pieces of data. Um, the, this frequency distribution actually can't handle numerical data. There's a different way that we go through and do that, and I'll show you that later. All right, so let's go ahead and do birth month. So let's go click on birth month, and let's click OK. And if we look at this, let me open this up a little wider. Uh, let me just run it again so that we can get a nice big view on this. Once again, statistics, summaries, frequency distributions, birth month, and click OK. And there we go. OK, so unfortunately, does it, does it put having them in order? No, what it did is it put them, I don't know what it did with the order, but it kind of has them all sorts of out of order. Now, I could change the order if I want to. Let me show you how to do that. So if we go to our data, we could go to... Um, manage variables and active data set and down here I can reorder my factor levels all right so I want to click on birth month and click OK and it says that do I want to overwrite um, the basically the factor level and be like yes I want to overwrite it okay and now it says these are the old levels I'm not quite sure why it chose oh I think what it did is put them in alphabetical order yeah which is not what we want we don't want them in alphabetical order we want January to be one we want February to be two Let's see if I can get these all right. March, 3, April, 4, May, 5, June, 6, July, 7, August, you get the idea, 8, September, 9, October, nobody has October. Okay, October, we'll have then November, and then December, the 11. Let's make sure that we that's how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, good. And then I can click OK. And let's see if it works. We'll go back to our frequency distributions, birth month, click OK. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, no October, November, December. Great. Okay, so we were able to kind of reorganize that uh, so that we can actually have these in kind of order. Okay, let's see. Do we see any patterns? Just looking at these numbers, it's a little bit hard to do, but this is a type of our frequency, um, our, our frequency table. What could we do to make this a little bit better? Okay, so there, there are some options that, that, that we have. Um, maybe we should make instead a um, some sort of graphic. Well, we can always do that. We could go to graphic. We could go, let's say that I want to make a bar graph or something like that. We'll do bar graph. We'll click on birth month. And I can also add some titles and things. For right now, I'm just going to just keep it simple. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. So it gave us a nice little table and we can kind of see some of the peaks so it looks like we've got kind of this peak in March a peak in July and peak in September so anyhow kind of cool right like we can take this data and we can look at it and graphically uh, 
data is a lot easier to kind of get your head wrapped around if we're able to have some sort of visualization. And we've got a whole section on just data visualization coming up. Okay, so that's one thing that we could do. Uh, if we wanted to take this and then actually make a um, oh a frequency, a really nice frequency table out of this, uh, we actually need to go back into Excel. And we could, I'm going to highlight and copy the title and the numbers. I'm just going to copy those guys. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to paste it. But if you notice, it kind of it shoves everything into these first two cells. That's actually not a problem. We can fix that pretty easily. I can go to data, text to columns, and I can say that they are a fixed width or I could do delimited. Let's see if we can do it with fixed width. So I'm going to hit next and look, it does this nice. Each of these lines is a break. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Okay, so you see August and September were missing one. So I can put in a little line right there. Now I've got August, September, November, and then December. And so I'm just going to click finish. And now it drops each of them into its own cell, which is exactly what we want. Now, when we're doing a frequency table, like this really isn't the standard format. Uh, the standard format for us, let me copy this. And I'm going to do a paste special. And we're going to do what's called transpose, uh, which is down here at the bottom, which flips it to a vertical format. Okay, so this would be the frequency. Frequency. And this is like our our options or something like that and I'm going to do a total real quick total and in Excel when we want a total we can just hit equals and then type the word sum with a parenthesis and we can just highlight what we want to sum up and that gives us our total it adds up to 30 which it better because we had 30 people answer this question okay so we can then go on if we want to do like relative frequency relative frequency we could then go on and say equals. I said, well, how do we figure out like what percent of our class was born in January? Well, we can do that. Remember to find a, a percentage out of a whole, we take the part number of January divided by the total. Okay, and I can just hit enter. And that is the percent, or I guess, you know, if we multiplied it by 100, that'd be our percent. So, but that, that's our, our proportion, 0 0.06. Um, so like 6.7% of our class was born in January. Now, if we just drag this down, the equation will follow along. But notice how we have this problem. It says, uh-oh, it divided by zero. Well, if we double click on it, we're like, oh, okay, now it grabs February, but it dropped down here. And we didn't want that. We still wanted to divide by the total. Well, we can fix that. So if we come up here and we highlight B18, uh, you can lock the cell. And we lock the cell by pushing F4. Uh, oops, sorry. So on a Mac, uh, you'll want to push function F4. If you've got a laptop, a lot of times you're going to have to push the function button and then F4. If you're on a just a desktop PC, you can just push the button F4 and it'll lock it. And you'll know that it's locked when you see this dollar sign before and this dollar sign after. And I'll click OK. And now I'm going to drag it down. And notice how all of these guys, so I can double click on this. Now it's 2 divided by 30 and continuing on so on and so forth and now if I do another equals sum and I highlight all this it should equal one or 100 percent so that's like a quick way how you can do uh, a nice frequency table with categorical data now numerical data is a little bit different we've got to go and do a couple different steps so first of all we want to go to data no oh, sorry statistics summaries and we want to go to numerical summaries okay so now we've got these numerical summaries and let's look at uh, money on fast food okay so we'll do on fast food we'll look at our statistics and I really don't care I don't want the mean or the standard deviation or the interquartile range or the quantiles we're just gonna basically deselect everything uh, and I just want to click on bind frequency count Okay, so this is going to bin my my numbers into certain bins uh, so that we can see how often things happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And here we go. So this is what my bin frequency count actually looks like. So this is my distribution. So it says the count is how many people actually spent this amount of money on their food. 
uh, for the last time that they're able to think about when they spent food on or spent money on fast food. So we can see that it broke it down uh, in these different bin sizes of steps of five. Now we can actually change that step size. Uh, and we can also play around with one thing that we have to do is we really do need to make sure that for whatever reason our commander wants to throw zero so if somebody answered the zero that they spent no money on fast food like they never eat fast food then it would actually be pooled in here which is actually incorrect it actually needs to be kind of in in its own little spot okay so how do we how do we check that and what do we need to do well it's actually pretty easy we just need to add in just a tiny bit of code so we can come up here and we can see this is where it did its bin counts it grabbed the data grab the specific variable and we can do just a simple little add to the code we can say breaks because that's what we're doing we're saying where are the breaks equals and then we can type in sequence or seq and then do a forward parenthesis and a backwards parenthesis and we're going to go between those two parentheses and type out a little bit so we want to say where we want to come from and where we want to go to and how and how big do we want our steps all right so i actually want to start at i want to start at negative five i want to go to 35 and i want to go by steps of five so all this is going to do is it's going to give me just one more step above you know what if i didn't want to do that i could do uh, instead of steps of five let's do steps of 10 just so that we can play around with it a little bit so now i'm going to go from negative maybe we'll go from i don't know let's change this up a little bit we'll go from negative 10 and we'll go to 40 and we'll do it in steps of 10. Okay, so I edited this little piece of code. I didn't go like and click the buttons. I'd already clicked it. That was the last thing that happened. If I want to run this line again, I'm just going to highlight it. And I want to click Submit. Okay. Aha, so I was right. There was somebody who answered zero in there. So we do need to make sure that we that we um, basically do one more um, one more bin before there, but um, before what it naturally wants to do, just to make sure that there wasn't somebody who answered a zero. Uh, so let's go back and we can go from negative five to 35, and we can go by steps of five. And I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to click submit. Okay, and here we have a really nice frequency table. So once again, we can highlight this. I'm going to copy it. And let's go back to our Excel file. And I'm just going to open up a new sheet and want to paste it in here. And once again, look, it drops it all right in there. That's not what I want. But what I can do is once again, data, text to columns, fixed width, next. It puts these lines in, which I do want, next, and say finish. OK. And check it out. I'm going to just do a little bit of. I don't know, make it look a little bit better. So here's our count. This is also known, remember, as our frequency. And the percent is also known as the relative frequency, which is great. Um, so we could leave these as the relative frequencies. The only thing I don't like about them is they're kind of rounded a little bit. And so I'm going to change it just a little bit. So all we, we already did this in the other one. I'm just going to say equals my frequency divided by my total, don't forget to lock it with that F4, that function F4. And then I'm going to drag this guy all the way down. And then I'm going to just say equals sum of all of that, just to make sure that it adds up to one. Okay, so the last thing that we can do is we can also do for numerical data, it makes sense, categorical, not so much. We can do the cumulative frequency. And we can do the cumulative relative frequency. All right, so the cumulative frequency is just saying like how many were in a bin or below. So how many answered zero that they spent no money or less? Well, we'll say that equals, so there's actually a fun little equation and I'm gonna blow this up so that you can kind of see it a little bit better. Okay, so here we go. We're going to say equals sum, and we're going to click on this first guy, and then we're going to put a colon, 
and we're going to click on that exact one again and then end with a parenthesis. And what we're going to do is you just click on one of these B2s and you're going to lock it. And I know that's weird, but we're going to sum. So what that literally is saying, we're going to sum from B cell to locked this B2 cell. Okay. So we hit enter and the first one just equals one. Now if I drag this down, ah, look, it shows up as six. What is it doing? It is summing the line that we're on and everything below it. Okay, so if we sum all the way down, once we hit the bottom, it should equal 30 because we're equaling everything. Okay, so I can say how many people said that they spent $15 or less? I could go to the cumulative frequency and said, hey, there were 27 people who said that they spent $15 or less the last time they ate fast food. All right, so cumulative relative frequency is pretty simple as well. Uh, there's two ways that we can do it, and both of them are just fine. I can just sum up the relative frequencies exactly the same way. I can do sum, but now instead of click on this guy, colon, that guy again, and my parenthesis, click on one, lock it, oops, dear, sorry, lock it, hit enter, and now I can drag this guy down. And if it sums up correctly, the end should be one, because it's saying, what are the percent of people who said that they spent, you know, $15 or less? The number was 27, the percent is 90%. Anyhow, so that's kind of handy, and that's how you go through and you get your uh, your frequency table. So this is a complete frequency table for a numerical piece of data. Anyhow, so that's another way that, that we can do that. Uh, let's take a quick peek at what are some of the other graphics that we can get. Uh, so we can do a graph, we can do like a histogram, and let's do for the percent spent on fast food again, and we can click OK. And so here is this guy, but notice it all, it starts at zero. We got to fix the breaks again. So the nice thing is we can just copy this breaks that we used from the last one. So that's the last line that I use. I want to copy that. And here it says breaks equals Sturges. I honestly don't know exactly what Sturges means, but we can just paste in the code that we just used. I'm going to highlight that last line and I want to click submit. Aha, and check it out. We got that zero person in actually the spot that they that they're supposed to be all right so we look at this histogram and we say hey check it out it looks like that we have this kind of nice little bellish shape you know most people spent you know uh right around you know eight dollars something like that and we can see this nice little distribution which is cool so like what we're going to be able to do is we're going to start be able to talk about like what is how much does a typical person spend or you know we look at this person who spent over thirty dollars and maybe they actually spent for a whole family and not for themselves uh and or maybe they were just ridiculously hungry that's that's pretty cool um anyhow so there is another kind of graphic that we can do so this software allows us to quickly visualize our data and create tables so that we don't have to do this by hand uh, because coming up here in the future i'm going to be giving you data sets that are huge you know that have i don't know maybe a thousand or two thousand data points and like you can't do that by hand without making you know tons of errors or taking just an absolutely insane amount of time but with our software package it makes us be able to do this very quickly uh, and very easily so where it doesn't matter if you have you know 30 pieces of data or if you have like 3,000 pieces of data it doesn't matter because our process is going to be the same anyhow so this is some of the stuff that you can do with uh, with our commander I hope that this helps a little bit I had a lots of questions on frequency tables or getting data loaded in um, if you have more questions feel free to reach out to me especially during the, this first week I understand that trying to learn this software is not the easiest up front but I guarantee you that it is um, it's much better to learn it this now because we are going to be offloading a bunch of the calculations that we do by hand uh, and we can let just our commander do them and so we can focus on things uh, instead of like the, just the nitty-gritty of like doing these calculations instead we can take our time and focus on interpretations and what the data actually means anyhow so you can go ahead and play around with this little bit of this icebreaker data set um, and good luck uh, I extended the deadline for some of our um, for some of our assignments. So check your emails and 
have a great day.